Tip tut. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to episode three. Wow, we're getting pretty deep now. Um, let's dive right in. No introduction this time. We're going to just do it. Bamo. Um, what's up next? This bit is. Perfect. Next four bars then. Um, what we've got here is text that comes in, scales up, rotates around, some lines appear on the beats, and then it cuts to a new piece of text, which each time a beat comes along gets added to and slides right as if the line is sort of pushing it along the page. Perfect. Let's get right to it then. Okay. So here's what we've made so far. Brilliant. Uh, let's dive right in then. So the first thing we need to do is make it turn back to a red screen um, by which we just select our green background and we hit alt close square bracket to cut it off, meaning on the next frame it cuts to a red page. Now let's do the same thing with all our other uh, text up here. Alt close square bracket that cuts it off and then when the beat comes in Let's actually do it on the beat rather. So it actually would go along to about here, uh, which is fine. Okay. One more frame, Ooh, one less frame, sorry. Okay, so now what we wanna do is add in our new layer. Let's collapse these because we know we're done with them. Um, and we now need a piece of text that says, um, what does it say? Let's double check. Uh, or rather the text user needs to make this. Okay, cool. So. New text tool, or oops, let's make it a bit smaller, shall we? Um, try perhaps 70. Uh, let's try perhaps 50. Yeah, that'll do. And we'll move that from it as well. And we'll say, or rather, the techniques used to make this. Um, okay, let's not have it italic. Let's just have it uh, regular instead. Um, let's just bring back some of that uh, gaps between the letters and let's make it about 60. That'll do nicely. So the first thing we need to do is rearrange the anchor point by clicking on Motion V2. Again, you can use the pan behind tool if you don't have Motion V2. Uh, and then we just need to plonk it in the middle of the page by hitting P to bring up position and 96540 is the center of a 1080p page. Um, now, this is where we want it to end up. However, to start off, uh, it needs to be slightly smaller and rotated to the right. Um, so we need a scale keyframe, which is S, and we need a rotation keyframe, which is Shift R to bring up both of them. Uh, let's click both stopwatches to get a keyframe, and let's move along um, 30 frames this time. So I think it's quite snappish in this one, isn't it? It goes bam. I mean, that goes really slowly. Yeah, okay, cool. So um, 30 frames will do. Let's add some new keyframes there. This is where it ends up. Let's go backwards to those first keyframes and let's rotate by say 90 degrees, which brings like this and scale it down so that it fits the screen uh, like so. Now you'll see that it goes like that. Um, now what we actually want is for this keyframe to still be rotated 90 degrees. Uh, and for it to still fit on the screen. And then we go back to our first keyframe and make it uh, zero scale. Okay, now if we check our previous version, it doesn't actually start at zero. It starts just slightly smaller because it cuts to it, it doesn't matter. Um, so let's go back to this one instead of zero then. Oops, instead of zero, let's have it be say 50. Perfect, and then let's have this go to about 65 rather than 71. Okay, so that's good. We just then need to add our motion to that and let's make it really snappish by going in here like so, going right the way in and dragging that over so that it pops in and then turns around slowly on the next beat. So it pops in, it holds for 30 frames, then we do a new keyframe on this next beat here. So we can add a keyframe in like so, and then this time we'll go 60 frames. One, two, three, four, five, six, and that's control shift and the right arrow key um, to move 10 frames at a time. Um, now let's add in some more keyframes there. The rotation will go back to zero like so, and the scale will go as high as you like. Let's set it to about, I set it to 100 because why not? Um, so now I notice this won't move at all between these two keyframes because there's no change in value. And then as soon as this comes in, 
bam, it'll swing itself around. Uh, and what we actually want that to be is, uh, let's not have it completely ease out. Let's have it ease in and out like so. Actually, no, that looks terrible because it's like a bam, it's like a huge hit. So yeah, let's have it ease in completely like this. Yeah, that's much better. Bam. Yeah, snaps with it, lovely. Um, so that's that bit, nice, easy bit of rotation there. Let's just check out what's next. Okay, so some lines come along now with the hi-hat hits. Bam. So that goes one, two, three, and then on the main hit, it changes to the next sentence and drags it along the page. Um, so this is actually very easy to do. We just need to create a shape layer. So we'll find the hi-hat hit. One. One there, so that's where it should start. Um, we add in a line. Now the best way to do this is with the pen tool. Make sure no layers are selected down the bottom and then go up and click the pen tool uh, or shortcut G on your toolbar. Now you need to determine the start and end points of the entire line. You can see on this one that uh, although it looks like the line is dashing across the screen, this is done with the same trim path as we used earlier. But you can see the starting point of the line is here and the ending point of the line is here okay now that entire line needs to exist for it to animate along it so what we want is actually the starting point of the line about here and the ending point if you hold shift and make sure it's perfectly flat about here okay now you can see that our stroke has been remembered from previously but we don't want it to be 10 pixels we want it to be about two is that gonna look okay about roughly the same thickness as the text yeah that looks fine fantastic so let's select our shape layer alt open square bracket to cut it off to the entrance point then if we twirl down, we can go to our add menu again and choose trim paths like in the previous episodes. Now we want a start and an end keyframe uh, and we want this to be about the length of a hi-hat hit. So let's find out what that is. About there, that's when the next hi-hat comes in. Um, and then same as before, we want 100% and 100%. So both points are over here. And then on the first one, we want 0% and 0%. And then we want to offset Alt and the right key, one, two, three, about three frames. And then as you can see, it makes it look like the line is darting across the page. But you can see how the start point is where the line begins and the end point is where the line ends. So if it's three frames of distance, then there's three frames where it actually exists and the frames are slightly different from each other, okay? If this wasn't offset, you can see that the start and end points sit on top of each other and therefore you don't see the line. Now, if this was six frames, for example, of distance, then it would have six frames of length on the screen. Oh, let's leave it at six actually, that looks about right. Grab those keyframes, hit motion out, um, go to our graph editor, tweak it so that it's really snappy, um, like so, and then check it out. Maybe that's a bit too snappy actually. Yeah, let's put that back to three. Doom. Perfect, okay. So now we just need several of these. So you guessed it, we just duplicate it. One, two, three, like so. Now we can offset these in the same way we did before. We just go back to our first keyframe, make sure we select all of them so we can see all of the keyframes. Go to the end of that keyframe and close off the layer. Okay, now this time we want it to offset in the other way that we did. So we want this one to be the first. So we click, click layer one, shift click layer four, right click, keyframe assistant, sequence. And you'll see it sequences them in the order that we clicked them. Okay, very important. One, two, three, four. Okay, on four is when it should change. One, two, see it's a bit earlier there because again, it's not electronic music. It's natural, someone's playing this. Four, there, one, two, three, bam. bam. That's when we want the text to change, okay? Like in the previous version. So, so it goes one, two, three, bam, yeah? And then changes um, like this one does. One, two, three, bam. Now you can see the other ones, they overlap a bit. Um, and that's just because we can adjust these, Alt, Shift, and Right. We can make them actually a bit longer if we wanted to. Oops, excuse me, that wasn't correct. Um, one, two, three, and then on these ones too. 
you can see now that the previous version wouldn't have finished animating by the time the next one comes on. So if we were then to extend these points here to a bit further along, you can see that we'd get a bit of overlap. Yeah, the new line would start before the end line is finished. Yeah, seems a bit nicer, a bit smoother. Okay, so on the fourth hit then, bam, that big bam, that's when we want this line to disappear and the next line to overtake it, like so. Um, bam, like that. The next line disappears, this line disappears, and the next line sort of pushes in from the side, um, which is nice and easy. So we want to look at our end point again, which is this. No templates, no bullshit, no point and click, okay? So we'll grab that, and uh, the easiest way to do this would be to duplicate this layer, drag it above the other layers so that we know that it's sort of next in sequence, if that makes sense. Um, Alt, open square bracket to cut that off. If we hit U, we can see that we've still got the scale and rotation keyframes. So we can actually click these stopwatches to delete all of those because the only thing we need on this one now is a position keyframe, okay? So we'll change what it says. So no templates. Um, okay, we'll just hide that so we can see this a bit easier. No templates, no bullshit, no point and click. Okay, I think that's what it said. Uh, and then we wanted point and click to be bold, if I remember correctly. Okay, so we're happy with that. That's what we want our final state to be. So we'll animate this and then duplicate it and remove the text. So we want our position keyframe to be like so. And then one, two, three, four, five, six. Let's give it a second to make it nice and easy. New keyframe, go back to the previous one and shift it along. One, two, three, about three will do. Uh, let's put our easing back in there. There we go, so we can see already. If we bring this in here and we go back to our first keyframe, we can cut off this bottom layer, Alt, uh, right, uh, close square bracket, and you can see that as that text disappears, if we just trim that by one frame, uh, the new text overtakes it. Okay, uh, now obviously we want this to appear in segments. So the easiest way to do that is to duplicate these layers. So no templates is one, um, oops, excuse me. Uh, no bullshit is the second and no point and click is the third. Okay, so hide those two upper ones so that when we click this um, text here, and go inside it, we can remove these like so. Then on the next version, in the middle, we can remove just the last point, like so. And then on the third version, we want the whole sentence, okay? Uh, so now let's have all three of those layers visible just so we can work with them. And now we need to take each of these high hit hats. Um, let's check what the previous version does, so. And then now instead of the high hits, this lasts an entire beat. So you can see here, Three, bam, 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 bam. Each time a hit comes in, a new line swishes across and it changes the sentence or extends the sentence rather. So what we need is one more of these to attach to each of these next segments, okay? So we know this one's right. Bam, that's when we need the next one here. Okay, so all we do now is we just shift this along so it matches up. We duplicate with control D our line. We drag it above that and we shift it along. If you hit U, you can see the keyframes. Um, and then we do the same thing with the next one. Now, we want obviously this no templates layer to end when this new one begins so that we don't get any overlap. And then this next one here. There it is. Shift that along, duplicate our line layer, move it above, shift it along, press U so we can see the keyframes, like so, and then end this layer here, okay? So now what we see is this. Oops, we haven't got those visible. <laughs> Okay, let's try that again, but with those layers visible. Oh, 
okay? It sort of smushes it along. Bam, like so. One, two, three. And then it changes. Okay. So on that next hit, about there is where we want that layer to end. So let's take a look at what we've made so far. Perfect. And then it comes in. Um, so you can see how offsetting and duplicating is very, very important to After Effects. Um, it makes sort of animation very simple. Um, what we can do is actually, now that we know this is kind of, we're happy with it, we can um, take both of those layers and pre-compose them to flatten it. Uh, and we'll call this templates. Um, then if we go inside like before and find the first keyframe, like so, and we go back to here, we can cut off that layer, go back inside, find the last keyframe. We can, oh, if that is the last keyframe, no, nope, just past the last keyframe and go back to the main window and cut off there. So we know that that's when that section ends. And as you can see, it's pretty much lined up on the beat. See, I find it's best to preempt it a little bit, especially when you're fading and things, um, because it takes a bit of a while for like the human eye to catch up. So if you preempt it a little bit, it actually feels like it's more on the beat than if you get it directly on the beat. Um, okay, good. So what's next then? Let's take a look. This ain't no paint by numbers, okay? So we just want this ain't no paint by numbers to slide in. And then this interesting bit here with the text. I think we'll go into that next time, if that's all right with you guys, because we've actually covered quite a bit here. So um, thanks for watching. I think next episode will be the final episode. So that should bring us up to four, um, which is one for every week in December. So hopefully this should bring us into the new year. Uh, now, let me explain my thought process behind that a little bit as well. Basically, I wanted to have a chance to create a bit of a longer series, but I didn't want it to interrupt uh, the, the usual planning. So I thought if I did it over Christmas, most of you probably wouldn't be doing lots of animation and work over Christmas anyway, um, because you know, it's Christmas time, you want to chill out a bit. So hopefully this has been as least as disruptive as possible um, for my audience, basically. That's why I've split it up into parts and put it over Christmas, because I didn't want to try and do all this in one big long episode because people wouldn't tune in, essentially. So next time then, we'll take a look at this here, this ain't no paint by numbers, and we'll take a look at uh, this kind of popping up animation and how we're going to deal with that. Uh, and that's actually using the last plugin that we have um, here, which is Ease and Wiz. Um, so that should be a good one. Okay, join me next time, you guys, for the final part of Intro to Motion Graphics, and I'll see you then. Remember to subscribe for more tips, tricks, and tutorials. Thanks for watching.